Okay, this is it. Tying Catskill style dry flies by Mike Valla. This is the last one. I'm tying all 11 that are profiled in this book, the dry flies. If you look in the description, I'll have links to the other 10. But this is the last one. Quack. See this? It's basically a royal wolf. The only difference is, well, there's two differences. The major one, obviously, is there's no bucktail in the tail. It's brown. And Lee used to say he would he likes to use bucktail in the wing, but this has calf tail. And this is the fly right here, I'll show you. See that right there? So it's got the brown it's got the brown tail and it's got the calf tail wing. Uh, this is actually calf body here. And this is on the size ten old cock. But I wanted to I want to do something a little different for this one. There's a million videos of these Royal Coachmans, Royal Wolves, um, Quacks. This is actually a Royal Royal Coachman fan wing. See that? I did this. Actually, this is a video for this I did. Uh, it's on Instagram. If you go to my Instagram, you'll, you'll see a video on this. It's basically just a one minute tying video. But we're not going to do a, we're not going to do a size 10. We'll do it a lot smaller. Take a look at this right here. This is like the first line in the section. And and Mike talks about how uh, Winnie handed him a few size 18 wolves. 18! So, I don't know. I think maybe we need to tie size 18. <laughs> right? I never. I don't think I've tied anything smaller than a 14. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, I mean, maybe I haven't even tied a size 14. I don't even know. We're going to size, tie a size 18. That's what we're going to do. Something fun for the last one. The hook we're going to use is, we're going to use a Mustad. Now, this is a size 18, uh, 94833. That's the number, that's the model number. Now, this is a, this is a fine wire dry fly hook from Mustad, one of these older ones from, from Norway. Now, you see that gap right there? I'm not, I'm not too crazy about that gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a short shank hook so it has a bigger gap. This one here, this is a, this is a 94838. So it's a short shank. That's, that's how it works. So this is a 16 short shank. So it has the length of an 18 but it has the gap of a 16. Now if you look, I got one out right here. Yeah, put them next to each other. and Here's the next to each other with tweezers. So you can see here. So it's, it's the same length, but it's, the gap is wider, right? Now this is the hook I think, well, this is the hook I would use if I was tying them back then because the gap you need a bigger gap, I think, for the hurl. And and the body's just heavier. It's you gotta tighten so many different things. It seems to me that they'd want to use a a a larger gap hook. So that's what we're gonna do. So a size 18. It's an 18 length with a 16 gap. And the thread I'm gonna use is actually I'm gonna use two. I'm gonna use a white and I'm gonna use a black. I'm gonna use a white to start out. Now this is the Georgia Benici 12 oh both of these. Now they Probably didn't use a 12 -0 back then, so I wouldn't say I'm cheating, but I definitely think I have an advantage using the 12 -0. So let's get it on here. I've also waxed this a little bit. And we are not leaving a gap at the front, I'm gonna tell you that right off the bat. There's not gonna be any gap. Now the wing. The wing is calf tail. This happens to be calf body hair. I don't know how much of a difference there is. The calf body hair is probably a little bit thinner, I bet. But, um, but yeah, so that's what we're using. Now, you, you, you really need a bunch of this stuff to make a, to make a wing. You really do, because most of this stuff is, is fluff. You'd be surprised when you cut off a clump. It's, it's really, it's really, I'm 80% fluff. So, take a bunch out. Remove the fluff, and you can stack it too if you want, but you can also just grab the tips and 
just bring it in by hand. That's all right. So let's let's make sure we have a decent wing here. We really got to be careful of our turns. So I put I put four on. Posting it. Make sure we got all this stuff in the front. And we can we can we can lash this. Now I would say probably you can do a figure eight with one and then the next one just do a single lash. And then do a turn on, and then do the figure eight with one, and then go right into the lash. And it's, it's kind of good to use. That's why I'm using white because um, so then you don't see the lash. And I missed a couple here. Oh, that's all right now. Go, I'm, I, I just did a big loop so I don't add to the turns and now from here I'm going to switch to the black and when we go up we really got to make sure that we try and cover all this white up too many and we don't want them too long and one of the problems that you have with tying small is is that everything needs to be lined up even better than it is on a bigger fly because if it's not it's it there's not much of it there's not much room for tapering or mistakes even so we gotta we're gonna get this That's good. I'm going to clip that to match the cutoffs of of the calf. And we're not going to go any further than that with the tail. Although we, we are going to try and make sure it's on top. Give it a good squeeze. All right, now the peacock. The peacock, I'm gonna give you a tip on this stuff. See, this is where the eyes usually is, right? The eyes usually right up here. Well, the, the hurl that's closest to the eye, before you get to the eye, is the longest, meaning the hurl is the longest. So if you're doing a bigger size, you wanna use the stuff up here. But if you're doing a smaller size, you wanna use the stuff at the bottom. The hurl is very, th I mean, you probably can tell, maybe, but maybe you can't. It's hard to tell unless you tie it on, but from from me right now, if I put them next to each other, it's half the size. That's that's what I see. It's tough to see on camera. And also, another important thing is is that the hurl is shorter at the tip. So we want to use that that short stuff. We don't want to use it right at the tip because it's kind of weak. So you just cut it off just a little bit. Now I'm going to tie this in. And I'm going to, I only put two turns to hold the tail in. And this is turn three. And I have the hurl meeting the, the, the cut ends of the, of the calf. So I'm, I'm basically going in that, in, that, um, in that section again. And now we're going to tie up. And we're going to try and make sure that we have a decent taper. 
So I'm going to go back a hair and then up. And we can taper it with the floss too, so that's not bad. This is pretty good. Now I'm doing one turn right in front of the other because I want to make sure. Actually, I'm going to go back. So this is going to be good. This is going to be all right. I know that when I do a single turn up, it's going to it's going to match it. So we'll be all right. We don't want to add too many turns. Now I'm going to just do. I'm probably only going to do maybe two turns, maybe. Normally on a bigger size, I use two of these hurdles. But on this one, I'm just using one. So that's good. And now we're cutting it off right again, right next to the, to the, to the calf. Tying it in, one turn in front of the other, and I feel like that's going to be all right. We're going to go right there. Now we're going to get our floss. Now normally, I have to say, I may want to go back here because normally I tie in here, I wrap back, and then I wrap forward. But that might actually create too much bulk. So what I think I might do is I might go back here. And we'll get our we'll get our red floss. This is just four strand Danville. See that red? You only need one. You definitely. I wish I could use a half <laughs> on this thing. <laughs> so, but we we don't have a half. There's there's definitely finer flosses out there, but this is the one I got. Now let's. We're gonna we're gonna put it in here. Back and then forward, and then I'm gonna try and cut this off. Did I get all of it? No, I didn't. up afterwards. Now we're going to go right to we're going to go right to there. So we're going to hmm. I actually twisted it just a little bit just to try and make it a little bit thinner. I think, I think that's it. Is it it? No, I think I need one more turn. That's good. I'll tell you, this is a real, this is a real test. Okay, so I think we did three the last time, so we'll do three this time. We put it on and we turn it and we don't like it, we'll go back. So, 
so let's get this on here. That's good. We'll use them. Eh, yeah, we'll use some macro pliers. Now the amount of turns we're gonna get in here is not gonna be much, but. swing back and really get this thing close and we're gonna go for one more clip this stem back and we'll get our whip finisher here Now some of these are a little bit long. These 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 fine ones. And you can actually just if you just cut the tip, the tip is cutting the tip is fine because it, it's still super thin. Do I have let me get some tweezers though first. Actually these will work, these hackle pliers. So there it is. Size Size 18 quack. Man, they fished these things back in the day. I can't believe it. I mean, that is just it's so surprising. I mean, maybe, maybe it's not surprising. I don't know. And, you know, honestly, I mean, geez, size 18 back then is like I mean, it's the, that, this is this is this is not a modern day size 18. So this is real small. Um, it's real small. And you know, I would say this is probably the best I can do. I don't think. I mean, the wing is a hair leaning forward, a hair. But to get it to go back any further would have required a whole ton of turns up front. So. Uh, I mean, I think it. I mean, I think it looks good. Um, that's the front again. So that's it. Well, it's a cool way to end this this little series. I think fun way to end it. Doing one of these 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 tiny flies. And I think that um, I mean I'm gonna do more. You know, I'm definitely gonna do another series because I really like doing them. It's um, it's really fun. Um, and the next one I think I want to do is maybe a streamer, streamer series, like the classic, classic streamers book by, by Mike Vallow. And I think that, that, um, it, uh, even though there's so many streamers profiled in that book, it's not like the Drive Live book. It's, 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 there's way more. I mean, there's gotta be, I don't even know, 60, 70, 80. Now I'm not going to tie that many. What I'll probably do is cherry pick about 10 um, uh, from across the books, some of the ones that are the known ones, and maybe some different styles. I'll mix up the styles, like the Carrie Stevens style, the Bucktail, just the simple Bucktail ones, and there's some other no, other styles in there that that I would probably like to do. And I got a cool package of hooks we're going to be using for that one too, an old Norway, old Norway streamer from Mustad. 
Um, and then after that, I don't know. I mean, I probably should. I have this. There's, Fowl's got another dry fly book. It's right here, actually. It's right next to me. It's this one. Actually, that's funny. It's got a fan wing on the cover. Look at that. <laughs> I didn't realize that. So, th this, this is a big one, right? Um, this one is called the Classic Dry Fly Box. There's a lot of good stuff in here. So, m you know, maybe we've got to do some things from this. Yeah. And, and you know, these those books are a little more obtainable, too, like the Classic Streamer book. That actually just came out. He wrote it a long time ago, but it just came out. The Dryfly Box one has been out a while. Let's see. Um, I don't know, when did this come out? 2010, so it's been out for a decade now. But it's still very obtainable, and it's not it's not expensive in the grand scheme of things. That that tying Catskill Dries one, uh, that's, that costs some bucks, but it's hardcover, uh, and it's worth it. I mean, the amount of the amount of research that it took to do that is really, I mean, the amount of like old flies that, that have that, that had to have been, you know, had to have the pictures taken, I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. So it's worth it. It's my favorite dry fly book for sure. It's my favorite Catskill book. It's probably my, one of my favorite, or maybe it is my favorite, like, trout fly book. I mean, it's got to be up there with, um, even the salmon fly books that I really love, like that Bates book, I really love that uh, the Bates book. So it's it's in the top three books of all time, I think, for me. And it's definitely my favorite dry fly. So I I think that um, and I have a, I have a link in the description for that book. Uh, it's um, for it's an Amazon affiliate link, so I get like a dollar or something like that if you buy it. Uh, but I used to have the Deddy link in there, and they sold out. So, from you know, doing the video, so it's great. I mean, I, I, I just people helping that helping out Daddy is good. So, if they if they weren't sold out, I'd link to them. I would tell you to buy from them. But um, but that's it. So, size eighteen quack. That's it right there. Pretty cool. All right, thanks everyone. See ya.